All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a uh, great weekend. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody that came by uh, CBGR in Alhambra on Friday for our Thanksgiving luncheon. I think it was a great turnout, you know, and we we're able to break bread with a lot of friends, associates, affiliates, colleagues. So thank you for those who showed up. Um, much appreciated. Uh, on that same note, for whoever is on our meeting this morning, we don't have a whole lot of traction given that this is a holiday week, but I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you and your families and friends. Hope you guys have a, a joyous and happy Thanksgiving, okay? From our family at CBGR to yours. Um, with that, we have our affiliate spotlight today. Uh, Marie, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Marie Paramore, Contempo Escrow, here to help you grow your business. Um, I'm going to go with a lot of... Uh, I'm going to go with several topics, but I'm going to give you short versions. I know I spoke with the Arcadia office. Now I'm going to kind of repeat the same information for your team. Um, whenever you're closing your transactions for your clients, your lister, you're selling, you have the listing agent or the selling agent. Make sure you ask your client, your, your escrow officer for settlement statements. Um, it's very important that your clients um, get their settlement statements in the middle, well, you as the agency, uh, closing statement towards the middle of the transaction and towards the end. Um, a lot of times things can get missed. There could be a credit that was not accounted for. There could be something that you were paying for. There could be a charge that your client, the HOA documents. Um, you always want to be aware of what's going on with your client's numbers, just in case there is a uh, mistake or something that's missing, you can help join in. Um, if you guys ever need any personal um, instructions on how to read a settlement statement, I'm definitely here for you for a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you always want to make sure your commissions are there, your uh, payoffs are there, your if your client's paying for termite, home warranty, things of that nature, your termite completion gets to the escrow company so that all fees are accounted for. And again, if you guys want any special training on a settlement statement, please feel free to reach out to me. I also want to talk to you a little bit about 593 withholdings. Um, on the 593 withholding, um, one of the things I recommend is you as a listing agent, please do not advise your clients on these documents. Um, they are to go to their attorneys, uh, to their accountant's office and ask for um, direction. Now, if we know these people have lived in this house as primary residence or they currently live in the house as primary residence, it's very simple from that form. They're just going to complete the first box that says this property is your primary uh, residence. And then they're going to go to the third page. The very first question at the bottom says this transaction is fully exempt from withholding. That will tell the escrow company there's no withholding to the franchise tax department and we can move forward. If none of those exemptions on that 593 apply to your client, and when it's a withholding, it's going to be at three and a third percent of the uh, sales price, which the escrow company will send to the franchise tax board. Um, if your client can also choose to go to an alternate withholding, which is normally what the accountant or the CPA will prepare to tell the escrow company based on um, what their gains and their losses and their write-offs are, what that actual percentage that escrow company will send to the withhold to the franchise tax board for withholding. If you have a foreign seller it becomes something totally different. Um, your seller, if they are a foreign seller and they do not have uh, green cards or work permits or social security numbers, we file their, um, their withholding under zeros. It's how we're instructed to do, um, along with the 88, um, 88, 8880 form. Um, which shows the buyer withholding the funds for the uh, seller to be sent to the front, to the IRS. The seller is subject, if your property is under $1 million, the client will, the seller will pay 10%. If it's over, it's 15%. Those funds will be sent to the IRS off the top of the transaction. If that property is not your buyer's, the seller's primary residence, they're also um, we are also required to hold the three and a third percent, which goes to the franchise tax board. I always recommend, um, which I use with your office very often is, I think it's direct one where they will help you obtain, your, your listing agent obtain um, 
an ITIN number in order to file the taxes. I told a story last week to Peter and the rest is that um, my other escrow officer, Amy, had a seller who we just did another large file for. She had um, she had a five million dollar sell five years ago. She was a foreign seller. She filed under zeros with the IRS. The, es the escrow office sent like one point three million or one point two million over to the IRS. Five years later, later, she still hasn't gotten that money back because she filed, it filed under the zeros, which made it way more difficult for the IRS to find it and to get it processed. So I normally suggest all clients go through direct. That way, you know, you get your money or whatever funds are warranted to your seller back to them in a timely manner. OK, again, any questions on any of this information, if it's going a little too fast, just give me a call. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about is farming. Guys, get out there and hit the pavement. We're in a very different industry right now. Um, many of you that have been in the year in the industry 10, 15 years, we're probably seeing a market we've never seen before, a little bit more challenging, which means we have to be a little bit more creative. Um, I, I have like I have a client that on 4th of July, she sticks flags and she does farming and she goes by and she puts flags in the grass all the way through the neighborhood. I have clients that give out calendars. Um, it's reaching back to your prior clients, whatever you have to do, whether it's calendars, um, flags, whatever it has you have to do to get in front of that client is reaching back to your sphere of influences, working a little harder. You've got to do a little something different to get a different result. If you need any farming um, equipment, I have notepads and pens and things that I can offer. If you need estimates for your listing appointments, please feel free to call, call me. Um, in reference to mobile homes, I'm going to go back there again. Um, real estate is my primary. It's what I've done for 30 years, but somewhere along the way, mobile homes became a specialty. They're selling, guys. With the, with the um, property values going as high as they are, people are looking for alternative living. Mobile homes are it. I'm literally opening five mobile homes a month, which is probably historic. We're closing them. You know, they're, they're opening and closing far more than the real estate are right now. And I always use Alma in your office, um, who is, she, real estate is her primary, but she has filtered into the mobile homes and she's killing it. And what I always say to you is you can go and sell a listing in one neighborhood and maybe the house is 1.5 million. You get your commission, but you can go to a mobile home park where there's a hundred homes farm that mobile home and take a hundred homes in escrow. So you're going to do yourself, once you get, once you can sell one home in that mobile home park, then you open yourself up for solicitation throughout the park. What I'm seeing now, as far as commission wise, you know, you have your 2% or 3%. That doesn't really work in a mobile home. So my agents are asking for flat fees. So if you can do a flat fee of eight nine thousand dollars based on sales price, you're going to score. And if you sell two or three mobile homes at eight thousand dollars, if you sell three mobile homes, that's dollars in commission. It's worth it. Are they much harder than real estate? They're a different animal. I won't say harder, just a different animal. Um, all I say to you is, if you know how to write a contract, I know how to close a mobile home. So let's get together. Let, let's get some mobile homes. If if real estate is not working for you, um, let's do some mobile homes. If you want to farm, let's farm. I want to help you in both. I want to help you in your real estate and your farming. So whatever you guys need, I'm not going to hold up a whole lot of more of your time. I think um, I've kind of covered a lot of areas. Happy Thanksgiving. And I'm want to really truly say I've been a part of the Coldwell Banker for prob family for probably about 12 years now consistently. And I want to thank Peter um, and Ruben and all of you for having me always. Thank you and have a happy Thanksgiving. And I'm truly blessed to have all of you. Really, thank you for the valuable information, Mary. I have a question, uh, a question for you, though. I, I was told that, that the withholding for a foreigner is up to 28%. Is that mm, no, the stature is if it's under a million, it's still no, uh, over a million. Over if it's a million, million. it's a percent. What? How many? How much? Over, over a million is fifteen percent. Your buyer has to sign to the obligation of the withholding. Oh, it's only fifteen percent. Well, actually, actually, it's worthwhile to just uh, uh, 
let let it go then. Fifteen percent, you know, is is less than the than the um um the capital gain. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess it would depend on how what your need is for that money. What your need is, and because I don't know, because I'm not an accountant, I don't know what it looks like when they withhold that type of money. Do you ever get truly get that money back? By the time the when the IRS takes you're supposed to get it back, right? I mean, if if you file the tax return and uh, your tax uh, is uh, uh, less than what is what what's withheld, you should get it back some some of the money. Some of it, but I don't think they truly get it all back. Oh no no no! Of course not. Of course not. Uncle Sam wants his share. <laughs> that's why. That's why if you have a very large property and you you are in in um, you know you're a foreigner and and um, you might it might be worth just just pay the fifteen percent, you know. Oh, I agree. I mean, yeah. and, so, I and, mean, you don't even have to file the the tax return to get your money back, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm a. <laughs> but I would probably want to file and see what I could get back. <laughs> yeah, but you won't get it back. You know, realistically, you might you might own additional liability if you if if, if uh, you only would tell. 15% and then later on your tax return indicate that you have to pay 20% for it. Yeah, well, yeah. For that, the gain. That, then, then, then you have to pay more, uh, 5% more, you see? I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Marie. We're uh, very grateful to have you as one of our affiliates, as we are grateful to all of our other affiliates. Before I introduce the other affiliates that we have on board, I just want to touch base on something that you brought up, Marie, which is far, uh, actually uh, uh, campaigning, which this holiday, th these holiday campaigns, which is basically either sending magazines, postcards, emails, texts, whatever. This is the pro probably the most effective campaigning you can do that will set you up to have a good Q1 for 2024. So if ever you're going to farm or do a, a campaign to get in front of your sphere of influence, your clients, your prospects, now is the time to do it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Okay. Those are, this is the most effective marketing that you can do at this time of year. It gives value to your, to why you're reaching out and stuff. Okay. Um, okay, let's move forward. Uh, let's go to John. John, good morning. How are you? Good morning, everyone. So you survived that Friday. It was a lot of fun there. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, man, you have, you have a great constitution there. and You stood fast, but I loved it. You enjoyed the whole ambiance of it, the delicious food. And I want to thank you uh, for inviting me. It's, I'm blessed to be a part of this family. Um, I just want to touch on a couple things. I'm John Wax with SNAP NHD, Natural Hazard Disclosures. Right now is a great time to reach out to your family members and ask them how they're doing, checking in, find out if they know anybody that may be interested in buying or selling and have any real estate questions. They're a great source. The other thing, they're all doing food drives and they're collecting um uh, a lot of the different offices are collecting uh, toys for uh, different causes. That's another thing that you can go around and talk about when you door knock, because it's a good time to door knock. People are at home. They're staying at home. A lot are going, but a lot are staying home. And this is the time that they may have time to talk to you for a few minutes just to find out, you know, check in with each other. See if you guys are a good mesh to see if you can do business and be their real estate consultant. The other thing I wanted to tell you was, remember, order your SNAP and HD reports at time of listing, or even better, order it and take it with you on a listing appointment. Show them that you're serious about representing them and you know everything about their property. They're gonna see that you're different than any of the other agents out there that are just bringing a clipboard and, hey, yeah, can we come in and talk about how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms? You want to be different. You want to be able to be informative. Yes, it's required an all-sale real property, including vacant land and mobile homes. So I'm doing a lot of business with Marie as well on the mobile homes, so I'm helping her out with those. But yes, you do need an NHD and tax report at least on your mobile homes. And then um, something to wrap your mind around. In the NHD report, we deal with disclosures. 
but we also deal with advisories. And what's the difference? The difference is disclosures are property specific and they're in out determinations where advisories are in a general area a particular property may be found in and it's information based. It's not an actual disclosure of that property may be uh, sustaining or being uh, susceptible to a hazard of some type. So if you have questions regarding anything, that's just one thing to wrap your mind around. Uh, don't be a secret agent, wear badges when you're out at the markets, stores, shopping, wherever, because people will feel better and they'll come up to you and say, hey, are you do work here? Oh no, you're in real estate. Tell me how the market is. It's a great way to lead in and show them that you're there to help them no matter what's going on and everything. And I, I'm just blessed, grateful, thankful, and I wish you all the same wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And again, thank you for allowing me to be on here and being able to support you and your agents. All right. Thank you, John. Always a pleasure. Grateful to have you here as well. Alongside the NHD at the time of the listing, you should also have your prelim. So to talk about that, we have Nicole. Nicole? Good morning. Happy Monday. Thankful to be here with all of you. And it was such a wonderful time to celebrate with each and every one of you that were at the potluck on Friday. Thank you for including us. And, you know, we, we do have a lot to be thankful for, our freedom here, our, our health, our family, and our friends. So it's a good time to stop and reflect at this uh, time of Thanksgiving. So again, thank you. And yes, you're uh, taking a new listing. We highly recommend that you open a listing prelim. That way you can see what's recorded on the property and you don't face any surprises when you open escrow, especially since there are transactions that are closing quickly with lots of cash buyers. So reach out to us. And also, if you have property in escrow currently, make sure, and you're representing the seller, make sure that you have them pay their property taxes through the title file or escrow file to avoid duplicate payment or money being held. Um, and we thank you all for your support. We look forward to um, Thank you, Nicole. Okay, so uh, I also want to introduce, I think she froze, huh? Yeah, uh, Nic Nicole froze. <laughs> I couldn't tell if she froze or if she finished. <laughs> well, thank you, Nicole. Grateful to have you with us as well. I, uh, I want to introduce a new affiliate, um, Jana from, uh, I think, uh, what's the escrow? Mutual, Jana? mutual escrow. Mutual. Yeah, so she Jenna is working with uh, James over at Pacific Plaza, and she's going to be handling all the escrows for the condos that are for sale. Is that right, Jenna? Yes, that is okay. correct. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, is Jenna. Yes. Hi, this is Jenna from Mutual Escrow. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. This is the first time I'm here joining this meeting. And um, thank you, Peter. Thank you um, for having me on last Friday's you know, um, Thanksgiving uh, potluck event. And I enjoyed it a lot. And um, today, this is my first time here. Uh, I'd like to, you know, just to say hi first. And um, wanted to let you guys know that Yes, I'm helping James with the new condos, and I'm also can help uh, other you know agents or everyone who's on board. That um, you know, whenever you guys have any escrow questions, you can always feel free to call me. If you need estimate, you need some you know us to prepare something. We can also help to do that too. Okay, anytime when you have question, uh, don't hesitate. You can call me anytime. Okay, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank right. you. Thank you, Ruben. All right, Jenna. Nice Thank to you. meet you again. Um, okay, so moving forward, before uh, before I, I introduce an agent, I wanted to talk to an agent of, about how, they, how he got business. I wanted to give a birthday shout out to Cecilia Wong. Happy birthday. 
Uh, this week is her birthday. And also a reminder that this coming Thursday, obviously Thanksgiving, and also the following Friday, Black Friday, the office will be closed. That doesn't mean you can't come in and work, but the staff and um, the office will be um, officially closed, okay? Um, just a couple reminders. During these holiday times, try to attend as many functions as you can uh, to engage with other people so that they remember that you're in real estate, exchange numbers, add to your sphere of influence. Um, so with that, we'll, it will give you a better start for 2024. Um, I wanted to ask an agent uh, how they got the business that they recently got. And um, Alex, he's with us today. Um, so he, he took, he did an open house for another agent here in Alhambra that wasn't able to ho host that um, open house. And Alex, tell us what happened. You're on mute, Alex. Alex, un unmute yourself. <laughs> hang on, hang tight, guys. Can't hear you, Alex. <laughs> Alex, you have to unmute yourself. Can you push the button to? I can't hear you, Alex. You have to unmute. Uh, we're not going to be able to hear him, unfortunately. So I was very proud of Alex because, you know, he's been trying and trying, like a lot of our agents have been trying in 2023. The industry took a turn and it's, you know, challenging for a lot of our agents and stuff, but, you know, he took this open house opportunity and, and did a great job and he got a buyer from it. So he's able to, they just opened the escrow. I'm going to comment on his, uh, uh, his escrow a little later and stuff, but I wanted to bring him on board so it can kind of shed some light to all the other agents that you just have to be consistent. You have to take any and all opportunities that are available to you to try to get business and stuff. Be true to yourself, be true to your clients. And, and I think good things will come to you and stuff. Alex, I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. So, um, but anyhow, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll talk about your listing in a little bit. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Doug so he can go over the business for uh, Arcadia. Hello, everybody, how you doing? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for that wonderful Thanksgiving luncheon you guys put on over there. <laughs> it was really, really nice. Uh, and I, I ate quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get over to, to the other side where, where James office was, where all the party was going on. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of fun. We, we were uh, waiting for you to say, yeah, I was in, I was in the quiet, <laughs> so I was in a quiet area. I, I didn't know there was a bit loud area <laughs> anyway, but that's, that's really good. But thank you very much. You know what, what Marie and, and Ruben and them are talking about. I, I'm telling you, this is an excellent time to reach out and talk to your, 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 your clients and your friends and your family. Remind them you're in the business and always stay in touch. If you don't want to call people, don't call them. Send them something. Send them postcards. Send them Christmas cards. Send them New Year's cards. Uh, you know, I, I send out Easter cards and Valentine's Day cards. I don't care. Uh, I send out everything. I just want to keep in touch with my sphere of influence. Uh, and and that's there is a lot of business there because they already like and trust you. And, uh, and, and I'm not saying it's easy. But you don't have to sell yourself to them. They already know you. They know you. They like you. They trust you. Uh, but they forget sometimes that you're in real estate. So that's why you got to keep in touch. The worst thing that will ever happen to you is uh, a family member or a good friend will buy or sell through another agent because they, oh, I forgot you're in real estate because you didn't keep in touch. Really, really important. So before I go into the sales and stuff, I just, uh, as Thanksgiving is coming up, uh, I just want to say that I'm really thankful uh, for my health, my family, my friends, and also all of you at, at Coa Bank of George Realty. You are also my family and my friends. And um, I, I really appreciate being here and appreciate all of you that uh, that I see and I talk to and, and, and I'm with. So thank you very much for that. 
Uh, I'd like to talk about a couple of listings and sales we have here. Um, Nick Borelli listed something up on Colorado Boulevard. It's a it's an Office Depot actually, uh, and they have a ten year lease still on it. Uh, the price on it is fifteen million dollars. It's a commercial sale. Uh, he's out getting a couple more listings this week too. So hopefully next week I'll have more stuff for you. Uh, Shirley Guerrero took four lease listings, residential, three in El Monte and one in Arcadia. Uh, so we're busily getting all that stuff put together in, in the MLS. So if you have anybody looking for a lease, we've got 3,300, 2,500, 2,000, and in, temp, and in Arcadia on Lindrose, 3,100. Uh, so if you have, a, you have a tenant you're looking with, give Shirley a call. She might have a good need for you. And some of the recent sales we've had, uh, Lauren sold a property in Orange for seven thirty-eight. dollars uh, We also had a double ender in Los Angeles, six units, $1,250,000. Sharon Chow had a listing uh, sell, I'm sorry, it's a lease, uh, twenty-eight seventy-five. dollars And just this morning, Suki told me that she had a sale, but I didn't get the information on it. So I'll have that for you next week. But I noticed more agents are coming into the office. And there's more activity going on right now. So even though we're in the holiday season, uh, don't be afraid to work. Get out there. Because a lot of other agents from other companies are not working. Oh, it's a slow time of year. It's a slow time of year because they're not working. But if you get out there, you might pick up some more clients. So get out there. Anyway, thank you guys very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll see you all next Monday. Thank you, Doc. Hey, can you hear me now? Hey, there we go. Alex, you figured out your technology on your yeah. phone. Huh? I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you guys over my phone because I'm here in Chino. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me, at the property. We're doing the appraisal right now. Moving and back. Make huh? story short, you know, on my 22 years in this business, this is the third time that I do an open house and get a buyer right away. So it's like my Christmas present <laughs> <laughs> ahead of time. <clears throat> but anyway, um, yes. So tell us a little bit how, how you got this client of yours. Well, honestly, is again, I just do it in an open house. <clears throat> and this gentleman, this uh, Asian Asian guy came with his friends and they were looking at the house and the wife is in New York because she is at um, uh, the university over there in New York. Uh, she's Columbus, something like that, the university there. Okay. Well, in or Columbia, Columbia, something like that. Cool. Anyway, so she was watching the house and, and they come, oh yeah, I love it. I like it. We know the area very well and stuff like that. So, so it's like uh, we used to do it before many, many years ago. Uh, we talked to the owner, Gustavo was here and then talked to the owner. We offered this, we offered that. No, no, we were. So suddenly I'm over the phone. They get the price and everything, the condition. And so it was easier deal. So we just, I wrote the offer and thanks God that I mentioned it. I'm here doing the appraisal. Everything seems to be fine. And again, open houses, is, you never know. Like it happened to me today. I know some other agents have the same experience, but sometimes it's boring, sometimes this, but it, it, at least you get something prospective or you might lucky and get a buyer right away, like it happened to me. Is it right. an all cash deal, the Alex? No, no. Actually, Peter, that was one of the negotiations. They offer uh, all cash, but they offer like two thousand dollars less what they were asking. So they say no, the house is in a good condition and everything. So we start to negotiate over the phone and. And the asking price is nine hundred and eighty thousand. <clears throat> so they come with the price of the nine hundred seventy. As his conditions, everything. So I just wrote the offer and did inspections. Everything seems to be fine. Uh, again, the prices actually they are doing the price right now, and it looks like everything goes on the right way. Congratulations, Alex! You got to put the work in, right? Yes, yes, yes. Actually. Uh, uh, and again, the the big issue over here was the long drive. <laughs> but beyond that, everything seems to be fine. But see that that's a decision you made, 
and you committed mm. to it. You you said, I'm going to take that long drive, regardless of what happens. And you hosted that open house and good things yes. came to you, right? Yes, correct. That's correct. Good. Well, sometimes, you know, if you're doing nothing, hey, go ahead and sit, sit at the open house. Do the open house. You, right. We never know what it's, what, what it's going to come out from that. A seller, a buyer, prospector, you know? Yep. Who knows? You took, you took the opportunity and, and good things came from it. So I'm, I'm happy yeah. for you, Alex. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Congratulations. And anyone else, uh, about the last Friday, uh, last Friday party, if I do or say anything, remember, I was under the, it wasn't me, okay? <laughs> it was the drinks. That I got, so you guys were here, so it was all because. You were <laughs> but yeah, beyond everything okay. was fantastic. It was fine. Great. Well, thank you, Alex, for coming on <laughs> thank and you. sharing that with you. My whole point mm -hmm. is take every and any opportunity that you can get to get business in, in the the current state that our in the industry is in right now and stuff. So don't, don't. Uh, and, and one more, one more point. Like, like, like dog, he just say, let's take advantage of this time. And regardless, like myself, sometimes I have years without talking with a client. Yes. Hey, I'm sorry. I haven't talked to you so much. And just go to the a small breath and then ask for the business. Yeah. That's all what we had to do. This is our business. Talk to everyone and perhaps the worst thing can do is they, they can block you out <laughs> if you send an email or do something. But beyond that, you have to take the risk. Yep. Overcome that fear. All right. Well, thank you, All Alex. Right. Thank you for you sharing guys that with us. All right. So uh, moving on to some Alhambra business. Um, we have five new listings. Cecilia Quinn. Quinn um, she has a commercial property in Monterey Park for 519. Congratulations. Karina Peng, she actually has two uh, uh, two leases, one commercial and one residential, one in Monterey Park and one in Baldwin Park. Uh, Patricia Ramirez has a residential listing in Azusa at 715000 And Emilio Campos, Campos has a business opportunity in Long Beach for 260000 um, I'm not sure what type of business that is, but if you're if you are intrigued, please contact Emilio. And then some new sales, new escrow. We have three. Cody Wu has a new escrow in Big Bear for six twenty five. Uh, Kenny Fan has a residential uh, escrow in Rosemead at eight hundred and sixty. And Alex, you have a new escrow in Chino for nine hundred and seventy thousand. So congratulations to those mm -hmm. agents for both the listings and the sales. Uh, the business is out there and like everybody's been saying, just continue to work during the holidays, you know, get that advantage over your competition and get your Q1 started off to a good start. Um, also with that, don't forget, as we closing out Q4 2023, it's important to start planning for Q1 2024 or actually the entire year, but at least have your business plan ready for the first three months, which is Q1, okay? It doesn't have to be elaborate business plan. As long as you have something in writing to hold yourself accountable for, how, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and how you're going to do it, okay? With what tools. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Peter. I hand it over to him. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I wish you guys... A joyous and happy Thanksgiving with all your friends and family. Okay, Peter. Uh, thank you, Ruben. Good morning, co-banker George. I, I hope you had a nice weekend. And I'd like to thank all the people who came to our pop lab uh, luncheon on Friday. And for those who could not attend, uh, you missed a good one. And then and indeed, we, <laughs> we we had a good time. We had good food, good company, and uh, uh, with some responsible uh, drinking and karaoke. You know, so uh, that that's uh, uh, a lot of fun for uh, for for us. And you know, I I wouldn't mind to do it uh, more often, right, uh, uh, Ruben? <laughs> Okay, and I, um, with that, I would like to share something with you uh, today, is, uh, which, which is a market update that I, I do every month. 
and I would like to uh, tell you what's happening in the market and, um, and uh, share with you some of the information that we got from uh, California Association of Realtors. Um, so, uh, well, there are good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is that, the, you know, the aff uh, housing affordability is really low, 15%. Uh, now, uh, that is probably the lowest since the 2007. Uh, where uh, the uh, affordability uh, was uh, uh, you, you know, almost like 15%, uh, but compared to 2012, which is like 55%, is uh, a far cry from it. Uh, uh, so really the, the affordability is uh, uh, very low, uh, you know, for the longest time. And um, the, the, the reason, uh, that's, the, that's mostly the reason why um, the, market is so slow. Now, we we don't uh, have a problem with the demand. A lot of uh, people are still wanting to buy the real estate or to buy their, their, house, their residences, but uh, that they cannot qualify. They cannot afford it. You know, only 15% of the people in California can uh, afford to buy uh, an average house, which is like $850,000 at this point. And, uh, and so, you know, um, and, and, and on top of that, they, we have a, a insurance crisis uh, where you cannot get insurance. So some of the escrow could not close because of the uh, uh, inability to find insurance. As a matter of fact, about 7% of the uh, escrow uh, never closed because of that. So that's why, uh, um, you know, we, we are in such a, a, a doodrum right now then, and uh, uh, just, you know, kind of, uh, kind of depressing, um, and, but uh, well, it's it, um, uh, it's, it's uh, hopefully you know the situation will change. But you, if you look at the the the, the, the curve, uh, uh, the, the, uh, this uh, uh, and uh, you know you see that that at two thousand and um, and uh, and eight, uh, the affordability. Uh, that's that's the time that we had a, a big, uh, uh, big um, financial tsunami. Uh, if you can remember, the 2008, uh, the affordability is 12 percent, and we are almost at that uh, the, the level. We are at that 15 percent now, and um, and compared to uh, 2012, where we have about 55 percent. Uh, you know, right here we have 55 percent uh, affordability. And you see, can that we 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 uh, you know uh, over, over the year it really dropped down to uh, uh to the to the current level. Um, uh, that's why that's why a lot of people um, it's very depressing. They they cannot even buy their the the first house. Um, uh, so and then if you look at this uh, that, um, uh this slide um on in at the time when in two thousand and twelve where the affordability is uh, 55%. Um, the, uh, the, the minimum uh, annual income required was 56,320, but uh, and today at current level is uh, 221,200 uh, um, for California and, and, uh, in general. Uh, and you can see that the, um, Los Angeles metropolitan area uh, the in 2012 is 53,780, but now you uh, you have to have $206,800 income in order to qualify. And uh, even Cisco Bay Area, you have to have 334,000 uh, uh, income in order to, to qualify. So that's why. You know, you look at it, and, and not too many people can afford unless they have uh, a rich family or they have uh, friends uh, helping helping them to uh, co-sign. Uh, it's very difficult for one person uh, to buy um, their first home. You know, so uh, and and uh, if you're looking at the minimum requirement we have compared to last year uh, in California, you have to have uh, 191,600 um, in the compared to last year, and now you have to have 221,200, uh, an increase of 29,600. 
And uh, for Los Angeles, 177 compared to 206, uh, an increase of 29,000. And, and in San Francisco, if even more uh, uh, acute because uh, now you have to have uh, 334,000 in order to qualify. Uh, now, if you're talking about the uh, the payment, which which include the principal, the interest, uh, tax, and the insurance, um, for you know at the, the 2012, you only need uh, 1,410 dollars, but in 2023, you need uh, to have uh, 5,530. You can see that it's such a, a, a big jump, you know, more than three times. Uh, for Los Angeles, it's the same thing. And uh, for uh, San Francisco, it's even more acute. You see, uh, 8,350, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, imagine um, uh, you have to pay the uh, $8,350 every month in order to pay your mortgage. And that could be a, a very big burden for you indeed. Uh, now, if you are uh, talking about uh, comparing to last year for California, uh, 4,790 compared to uh, right now 5,530 uh, uh, in Los Angeles, the 4,440 compared to um, 5,170 and, and uh, San Francisco area, uh, even um, uh, uh, more acute. So if you look at the, the affordability, housing affordability by the counties, uh, you can see that the, uh, in the United States, 34% in California is only 15%. Uh, as you are living in a, a very expensive state. And uh, in, in Los Angeles, even less than 15%, and maybe it's uh, you know, uh, 13 or 12%. And some of the area, uh, you can see that 5% for men uh, um, mono. It is ridiculous. Only 5% of the population can afford to buy um, uh, average uh, residence. So uh, what does it mean for the mortgage rate? Now, right now, we are at the federal discount rate of 5.5%. And so they eventually, they, they think that the, um, the, the mortgage is 8.25. It's not there yet. Uh, right now, the... the, um, the Interest rate, uh, the mortgage rate, uh, interest rate is uh, oscillating uh, around uh, seven point five percent. But uh, uh, if, it, if if the Fed doesn't change, it eventually it's going to be eight point two five. And then they projected that in two thousand twenty four, uh, when the discount rate is four point five, the, the 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 mortgage rate will be seven point five. In two thousand twenty five, will be six point six five, and twenty 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 six will be five point six. Uh, eventually, it will it, it will be stabilized at 5.1 percent. But you know, I hope that this is what they predict. But I hope um, um, uh, it's not it's not that way. I hope that the the interest rate will come down uh, faster and sooner. Uh, and actually, they were talking about it already and saying that the, by the end of uh, uh, 2023, which is next month. The Fed may uh, may consider lowering uh, 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 interest rate by 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 a little bit. Now that is just a rumor, so I you know don't quote me for it. But uh, uh, but hopefully uh, the 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 Fed will see that that we are really in 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 the beginning of the recession and we need uh, some relief in the interest rate. So so hopefully they will um, reduce the the interest rate to in 2024 to about 5.5%. Uh, so that, that that way we will have um, a little bit of relief in the um, uh, housing market and hopefully more people can qualify and hopefully the housing uh, affordability uh, will, will uh, be much more than 15%. Now, so if you are, uh, uh, you know, back in, in uh, two years ago when the uh, interest rate was Three percent, three percent, and if you can afford to pay four thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars per month for the uh, payment, uh, you can afford a house that is uh, nine hundred sixty-seven thousand three hundred fourteen uh, by paying. Uh, 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 let me see, by paying one hundred ninety-three thousand four hundred sixty-three thousand uh, dollars uh, for the down payment. Now, but if you uh, 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 the Paying the mortgage at seven percent, which is 
uh, it's about the interest what what they are, what we what uh, what the market rate is now. Uh, then you can only afford uh, six hundred seventy five thousand nine hundred forty five dollars a house uh, by paying the down payment one hundred thirty five uh, one eight eight nine. And if you further, if you have eight percent, which is very likely, if the the uh, Fed uh, doesn't change the, um, the 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 interest rate, you, you can only afford six hundred and twenty three thousand two hundred nine dollars. So compared to three percent, your 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 house uh, suddenly dropped to down, you know, over thirty percent um, uh, of the value. So uh, it's it's uh, for the it's a really a affordability uh, problem, you know, and uh, with, with, with that uh, high interest rate, uh, nobody can afford to buy a house, uh, you know, casually. Well, um, and, and, and you can see that um, the, the reason why it's true is, is that the existing closed sale uh, uh, last week is only 1.6, uh, um, uh, 1.6K, which is, uh, 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 16, uh, I mean, uh, 1,600. And uh, that's why it's kind of anemic and, and uh, not much activity going on. Uh, because of the, again, it's because of the housing uh, affordability and because of the people cannot qualify and because of the insurance crisis. Uh, and then you can see that uh, since the, uh, July of uh, 2021, it has been, that it, you know, the uh, existing uh, single family residence closed sales growth is um, uh, going, the, it's all negative territories, uh, especially uh, it was really acute at uh, when December of 2022. Uh, right, right now it's uh, getting better, it's only, only negative 4%. Uh, and then if you're looking at the, uh, um, the pending sale is uh, encouraging is because uh, because it is now it, it reversed the curve now uh, since since last month of my negative six point three percent now is in the positive uh, territory of five point four percent. So in other words, uh, the the pending sale uh, is uh, it inching up, and then ho hopefully that will that that will um, uh, improve the the housing uh, situation. And um, the the uh, ex existing uh, uh, single family resident active listing uh, is, is not uh, very um, uh, very positive, uh, uh, but it's not falling through the cliff, you know, compared to like uh, uh, the peak is 49K. Uh, uh, it's right now it's at uh, 38K and, uh, and it's still it's still not too bad, but but it's, it's not that, uh, that um, uh, optimistic either. So, um, and then uh, uh, the new listing uh, for the uh, added to the MLS uh, is uh, uh, three thousand seven hundred, and uh, which is which is uh, which, which is uh, not not very good either. Um, but the uh, the good good uh, news is that the medium um, days on the market uh, is only 20, uh, 20 days. So. So um, you know, compared to like forty-two days, uh, uh, you know, a couple months ago, that is a, a, a very good improvement. That means the, the the housings are selling much faster than a couple months ago. So so that is good news. Um, and also, if you're looking at the percentage of active listing with a reduced price, you still have uh, uh, you know you you, you um, it's, it's more and more it's coming up. It's more and more. Um, uh, sellers are willing to reduce their uh, their um, listing price now. Only thirty-seven percent of uh, the the listing uh, have uh, um, you know have uh, re reduced the uh, price uh, by the seller. So uh, that is a good sign. That means that the, the sellers are more um, willing to uh, to negotiate. So it was a good for for buyer. Uh, um, and. Uh, and the number of homes uh, close above the list price uh, is uh, still at forty-two percent, uh, which means that uh, you know the, the demand is still still very strong on, on, the, on the, the buyer side, and a lot of buyers still uh, want to uh, want want to uh, buy the house uh, in spite of the the uh, the, 
you know, very high price uh, uh, right now. And uh, at existing, the medium um, for the closing price per square foot uh, is uh, uh, constantly going up uh, since uh, since the beginning of the year, so from three three hundred eighty four dollar uh, per square foot to four hundred forty five dollar per square foot right now. Uh, that means uh, uh, that that the, the the price of the house uh, will stay pretty stubborn for a while. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, you know the curve uh, of the medium close price uh, uh, per square foot growth is like uh, for for last month is twenty one point nine percent. That's why uh, the the uh, medium price of the home is still uh, very stubbornly at uh, over six eight hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. So uh, that's what happened in the market. I know uh, it's not a a very uh, cheerful uh, uh, picture, but uh, while well, it's not the, we're not, we're not, the good news is that not, we're not falling through the cliff, and and uh, there's still a lot of uh, hope, and uh, hopefully the um, the um, the interest rate will will come down a little bit uh, by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. So let's hope so. And uh, but meanwhile, just keep on working. Okay. So any any questions uh, so far for the market update? Uh, I just have one comment, Peter. So the, yeah. those numbers that you were uh, indicating on the uh, qualifying income, uh, those are without debt, right? What do you mean without debt? That's not including any additional debt that a that a buyer would have on, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a. I mean, of course, they don't they don't count any other one on uh, yeah. debt. It's just so so for yeah. your income to up your yeah, further right. Yeah. That's 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 if the the home buyer has zero debt. That's yeah. the fine income. So if, yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. If you have car loans and you have other, right. other, other you know equity loans, yeah, that will play a role also. You know, right, right. So so that can play a factor in qualifying as far as how much they will need to earn. So any any debt you would have to add on to. The amount that they need to be qual to qualify, but nonetheless, that's why you have lo loan officers out there that you are affiliated with, so that way they can qualify the buyers for you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. All right. Well, that's that's all we have for today. We will be meeting again next Monday after the holidays. Uh, I wish you guys all a happy Thanksgiving and. Um, Hope you guys enjoy your family, your friends, and that uh, holiday time off. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving all. Everybody. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Be safe. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.